Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. Over the course of the last year we have looked at many entries in the fabled Golden Axe series, a franchise that in its most traditional form functions as a cooperative beat-em-up that was produced in response to the success of Double Dragon 2 The Revenge. The original game created by Uchida was conceptualised due to a combination of Sega's demand for a coin eating beat-em-up paired with his own personal love for fantasy RPGs such as Dragon Quest. These ideas were married up with western influences such as Lord of the Rings and Conan the Barbarian. With that the world would receive Golden Axe. Since the golden age of Golden Axe, see what I did there, as magical as some of the early games were, there have been plenty of missteps and mismanagement resulting in games no one asked for, such as a fighting game Golden Axe for Duel, or the absolutely horrendous reimagining Golden Axe Beast Rider, released in 2008. Ever since that terrible day the franchise has been relatively quiet, with no new Golden Axe games released ever since. Despite this, it has recently come to light that Sega have worked on another Golden Axe game. Back in 2012, the company would task a small team with bringing the franchise back to its roots, offering up a more traditional beat up affair just like fans know and love. Whilst this was quietly cancelled, for reasons we will get to soon, astonishingly the part of the game that was finished was officially released by Sega last week. This free to play game was given to fans to celebrate Sega's 60th anniversary, giving fans a peek behind the curtain to look at what could have been. Sega would even tongue in cheekly christen this scrapped project as Golden Axed, giving gamers a rare opportunity to experience this lost media. Whilst on the surface this may appear completely innocuous, not everyone felt the same way. In fact, we can go as far to say that some people were completely outraged by this unconventional move by Sega. In today's episode, we are going to be exploring the recent backlash Sega would receive in relation to this unique gift to gaming. So sit back, relax and get your popcorn ready as we go back and look at both what we know about this game and the interesting reaction Golden Axed has garnered. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the mad story of the cancelled Golden Axe game and why it caused outrage. Yeah! For many years there has been a call from old school Sega fans to see the release of a brand spanking new side scrolling beat em up Golden Axe game, an entry that would bring this franchise back to its roots, restoring quality to the Golden Axe brand. This war cry has recently gotten even louder since the release of the unbelievably fantastic Streets of Rage 4 across modern hardware. It legitimately warms my heart to walk into modern toy stores and see a Streets of Rage game sitting proudly on the shelves. We find ourselves once again in a time period where gamers young and old are awaiting the release of the next high profile 2D beat em up. And when it comes to games of this ilk, a new Golden Axe game is the top of many people's wish lists. Whilst fingers crossed we are currently going into a beat em up's renaissance, 8 years ago Sega were intending to create a new Golden Axe game and potentially even a new Streets of Rage 2, which we will soon get to talk about more. As mentioned earlier, we have just experienced Sega's 60th anniversary promotional giveaways. The long time game developer and publisher for a limited time allow players to log into Steam and download Armored Heroes, a tank battle game that lets 4 players battle against other people or AI opponents, Endless Zone, a game like many 2D space shooters of yesteryear, Streets of Kamurocho, a game that mashed up Streets of Rage 2 with Yakuza, and finally the controversial release we are focusing on today, Golden Axed. The cancelled prototype which is arguably the most interesting game out of this whole bunch. In the title's Steam description the game will be described as Golden Axed may be janky, may be buggy, may be an artifact of its time but it offers a unique glimpse into the prospect of a project that could have been and a rare peek behind the curtain at the sometimes tumultuous world of video game development. This description would accompany a trailer showing gameplay footage of this unfinished game paired with a freshly made wisecracking title screen displaying the words Golden Axed for the first time. On the whole, when news broke regarding these events, buzz was created across social media platforms in anticipation for this novel event. It was bittersweet to see this project see the light of day for the first time, with many fans expressing their interest in playing the remnants of this title. 
not only did this seem to be a Golden Axe game that offered the same gameplay format of old, but this was a game that was being designed to be played in the home, offering a four-player cooperative experience. These facts, paired with the game's striking 3D polygon graphics and use of violence and blood, made it look like, at one point in time, this was shaping up to be a very interesting project. Whilst we will obviously never get to experience what this game could have been, at least this release by Sega was able to provide us with a snapshot of what could have been. As you will know from the introduction of this video, not everyone was happy with the news that this game would be surfacing. Most notably the game's main programmer, Tim Dawson, who was not even reportedly notified by Sega that people would be experiencing his work. This would result in Tim setting out a series of tweets shedding more light on the game's development than what had ever been available before, which would include him expressing his annoyances and grievances when it came to working on this game. He would first tweet out, Woke up to the surprising news that Sega is releasing the Golden Axe prototype I coded in 2012 under crunch conditions. Tim would go on to pour his heart out on Twitter in relation to this game, with his second tweet stating, this project was my personal nexus of nightmare hours, inept management, industry realisations and heroics achieved with a small team under unreasonable conditions. So it's an odd feeling to see it surface 8 years later without context, credits and with a joke title sequence. Reading this tweet from Tim, it sounds like the emergence of this game seems to have opened up old wounds regarding a situation in which he personally did not feel he had control over, and goes on to elaborate on this further in his further tweets. According to Tim, along with his colleagues, he managed to deliver a Castle of Illusions prototype that had maintained the studio he was working at. This would result in a producer asking him to work on a polished gameplay prototype for an internal Golden Axe pitch. However, the catch was, he was only given two weeks to achieve this. Whilst this may sound like a challenge, which it was, this did not matter as Tim was assured by management that they wanted him and his team to develop it however they wanted. In Tim's words, they were expecting a miracle. In their mandate for the game, producers did however request that the game be darker and bloodier than previous Golden Axe games, featuring splatter, decapitations and two-button combat. So the goal was to combine these mandated features with the spirit of the original game. To quote another of Tim's tweets, he states, This would have been a difficult line to walk at any time, but we had two weeks and no time to iterate. So we made do, just really attack the design knowing we wouldn't be able to course correct much. But luckily we had a talented team of artists, animators and sound designers. Tim also states another fact which played into the difficulties was constant interference from the game's designer. Programmers Tim along with his colleague Sanatana Mishra would constantly have to physically block this designer from reaching their workstation or he would start explaining insights he'd received via playing a mobile port of Golden Axe he played on the way to work that day. Tim comments that he took to inventing arbitrary challenges like management wanted to see an attack animation in the game by the end of the day or they think the project is in trouble while I was busy coding enemy AI and the soft lock combo simultaneously. To make matters worse, according to Tim, just one week into this mountain of a challenge, this same lead designer threw a ridiculous curveball at the team by insisting they begin branching the prototype so that they could simultaneously pitch for a new Streets of Rage game. Obviously I myself, Big Daddy Top Hat, am no game programmer, as I would imagine the vast majority of you at home aren't either, but surely it doesn't take rocket science to realise that it's probably a terrible idea to try and get working prototypes running for new entries in two of the greatest video game series of all time in just two short weeks. I'm not sure what this designer was smoking, but I'm sure we could all do with some. Tim states that it took him sending a 2am email to the studio's head and a let's go for a coffee chat the next morning to get the Streets of Rage prototype stopped. Moving forward one and a half weeks into the making of the Golden Axe game, Tim describes being given his biggest punch to his stomach yet. Whilst development thus far had been challenging, he was happy with what he had achieved with his team thus far. The combat was fully working, so all was on track, but he ended up being called to a big meeting room so he could show the latest build to all management. He would showcase the game's progress to his bosses for the first time, but to his disappointment, he saw nothing but grey faces. 
This was followed by a long pause until one executive asked dismissively, where is the wow factor? Further to this, the same lead designer who got his experience that week from playing a mobile game, the very same man who wanted them to make a Streets of Rage prototype, would also attack the project in that meeting, complaining that they had not made a God of War brawler like he personally wanted. In this meeting, a further member of management continued to rub a nice handful of salt in the wounds by suggesting to Tim that he should have just made a pre-rendered video of a barbarian fighting a monster. With regards to the slew of harsh criticism that Tim received regarding the Golden Axe prototype, he states it did result in him having a moment of clarity. The executives were either too dumb to see what they had in front of them, or they just wanted to make him feel bad because that's the only way they knew how to manage people. In Tim's own words, he states, I was the guy who makes playable prototypes. I had over-delivered, and if they didn't want that, they screwed up. Despite the programmer's best efforts that night, Tim would lay in bed staring at his ceiling, thinking they didn't want his game. They wanted something else entirely. During this period of reflection, Tim concluded that they didn't matter, so would continue doing exactly what he was doing and deliver what he and his colleagues planned from the beginning. After a few days of refinement, including adding more effects, sound, polish, combat timing and making the combos more friendly, the finished build would be revealed to the same management team. However, to Tim's surprise, he would receive nothing but praise this time around with them lining up to tell him how good it was now. He goes on to say the meeting left him feeling dead inside, and any last shred of trust he had in this management team was now gone. If we are to believe Tim's tweets, it seems that Tim was being managed by a bunch of suits who actually had no idea what went into game development, and also had no idea how to manage their staff in a positive manner. Bearing these experiences in mind, it is no wonder that working on this prototype seems to have left such a bad taste in Tim's mouth. Regarding this, Tim's final tweet quoted the Steam page, which once again read as Golden Axe may be janky, may be buggy, may be an artifact of its time, but it offers a unique glimpse into the prospect of a project that could have been. Tim signs the tweet off by responding to this with Go yourself, parasites. Sanatana Mishra, who I mentioned earlier that was working alongside Tim, has also tweeted in response to the release of this game. The tweets outlined that management would tell them regularly and explicitly that there was no difference at all between how Golden Axe and Streets of Rage played, and that's why they thought it was possible to make two prototypes at once. Obviously, with these tweets from both Mishra and Tim Dawson, the outrage would kick up a social media storm, resulting in heavy media coverage and shock from fans. This, of course, would cause Sega themselves to respond to the swirling controversy. Sega's statement reads, Sega Europe reached out to the former members of the Golden Axe Reborn dev team to produce this prototype of the game for Steam as part of our 60th anniversary celebrations. We wanted to bring the work of the developers at the time to light and celebrate it as part of our history, something we didn't get the chance to do first time around. We certainly didn't mean to dredge up painful memories for Mr Dawson and his former colleagues or appear disrespectful. We've removed the line from the Steam copy that could have been taken as a slur on the development and would like to reassure everyone that it was intended as a comment on the build we had ported to the PC, not the quality of the original work. We're hoping lots of fans play the prototype and can appreciate the work he and his colleagues put into this developing this prototype. With regards to Sega's response to this controversy, to Firefight they would remove the line maybe janky, maybe buggy, maybe an artifact of its time from a game's Steam description, therefore restoring at least an element of dignity to themselves and the developers with regards to the release of this prototype. Sega making this Golden Axe prototype public has certainly been interesting, perhaps for more reasons than one. We certainly learned a lot about the development of this prototype, even more than I would imagine that Sega ever bargained for. It has most definitely been entertaining watching all of this drama unfold over the last few weeks. Whilst all the attention on this prototype hasn't necessarily all been for good reasons, at the very least it has got even more people talking about Golden Axe, which is never a bad thing. In an ideal world, this extra attention to the brand will help further push the demand for a new Golden Axe game, produced in the same styles as the old days. I love the franchise to get its own Streets of Rage 4 moment.
So ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of Golden Axe, the cancelled Golden Axe game. Let me know in the comment section down below if you are one of the people who downloaded this game and gave it a play yourself. What do you think? I would also be curious to hear what you thought of all the drama surrounding this game. If you want to learn more about the Golden Axe series, I have made individual videos covering the entirety of the Golden Axe Mega Drive trilogy, the amazing arcade exclusive Golden Axe The Revenge of Death Adder, and even one covering the strange Sega Saturn fighting game known as Golden Axe The Duel. To receive regular videos covering both beat em up and fighting game history, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Special thank yous go out to those who make working full time on YouTube possible by either supporting this channel on Patreon or hitting the join button to receive channel membership. Shout outs go out to Sebastian Velez, Carl Johnson, the Murder of Crows, Heo Paula Lopez, Joseph Rasmick, Luke Samuel Denton, Corey R. Marsh Sr., Capcom vs. SNK, BXL Goffin, Ryan Dinch, Evan Border, Philip Manth, Camber Rambo 82, Azrael Rawakai, Keith Ferguson, Joaquin Varela, Prince Knight, Michael Cullix, Ago, Jordan Durant, TOG Driver, Angel Light 85, Alephia Swanson, Timothy W. Haskins II, Nick Daniels, Princess Sano, Glenny Glenn, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Spudger McB, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Aaron McNamara, Instant Gratification, Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Posty XL, Michael Hall, Wesley Sang He, Ben Slightly, Langston Miller, New, Brian Barry, Stephen Lewis, Sarah Powell, Flaming Renee, Marvin Aralega, Chris Cool, Adrian Hannington, Bernard NG, Richard Stu Stewart, James McDonald, Crazy Yard, Dan Van Dammit, Adam Castin, Lewis Viant, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Paul Elliott, Me Machine Dean, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Hans Christian, Craig Jenkins, Tom Elliott, Retroverse.com, Casey Wright, Synth Spaces, Zai, Andrew Bazanski, and Gunther. Hendrix. Thank you to everyone who continues to back this channel and everyone who continues to tune in week in, week out. I love you all very much. Thank you.